Gentlemen, we have a seriously complex case on our hands. It's a predetermined murder which is a serious charge tried in our criminal courts. I want all five of you to come to an understanding of the case, the circumstances in which the act was committed and so on. It's now your duty to sit down and separate facts from emotions. One man is already dead. Ten other men sacrificed their lives trying to save these five men involved. Now four other lives are at stake. I am constituting this five-judge bench to decide the fate of these four accused men. I have full faith in all of you. You are all very much experienced in deciding cases such as these. I expect you in bringing me a majority decision to either hang these four men convicting them with the charges. Or release them free acquitting them. This case is all yours now. Gentlemen, the case details are in the file which is on the table. Ring the bell if you need anything. Gentlemen, let's not waste our time by frivolous introductions of one another. Let's get to the point straight. Let's look into the details of the case. I have already read the entire case and its details. My verdict is simple. Whosoever goes against the law shall be punished and in this case all the four accused men shall be sentenced to death. But, I feel pity for these four men who were struck in a situation, which forced them to commit such a crime. All they can do is ask for the executive pardon. You have every detail of the case here filed in the documents. Guys, there's a lot to explore today in this limestone cave. Hurry up. It's raining heavily outside, and I'm tired of this exploration. Of course we are tired. We must move out before the sunset. Or else it's going to be difficult to reach the city. This is an underground tunnel and we don't have enough food supplies to survive. It's been a wonderful trip for all five of us. We must thank our Spellinson Explorers Society for this. Before that, you need to thank me for being the guiding light for all four of you. I've been a wonderful companion to you. Without me you would have eaten up yourselves out of boredom in this cave. Ha 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 ha. Hell man, what was that? I've no idea. All I can guess is that a landslide happened right above us. What the hell are you talking man? A landslide. Seriously, Roger. If what you are saying is true, then we are all doomed. Aren't we? I guess we are struck forever now. Is there any other way to go out of this cave? I don't think so. The landslide has blocked the exit. I guess we will have to die inside this cave. Oh come on guys, let's not press the panic button. Let's see what we could do. Hope for the best, be brave. It's a serious situation, possibly life-threatening one. Let's wait for a rescue team. I'm trying to establish a radio signal. What about the signal, Roger? 
there is none. It's almost 20 days now, since that landslide. We don't have anything to eat or drink. Officer, I think I got the signal connected. Even I have it now to the inside of the cave. Do you hear us? What was that? What do you mean what was that? Wait a minute. I think I got the radio signal from outside. Somebody is trying to establish a signal with us. Who is the President of America? You got our support. We hear you. Tell us the inside situation. I need to first know who is in charge inside. We are five of them inside. My name is Roger Watmore. Roger, hold your breeze, you need to listen to this. There is a good news and a bad news for you. What's the good news? Good news is that we are here to rescue you. Bad news is that the rescue team which tried to dig a tunnel were killed when a roof fell upon them. To save you 10 rescue team members sacrificed their lives. So it might take another 10 days to rescue you. Another 10 days. We neither have food supplies nor any vegetation or animals available here to survive. It's almost 10 days that we've had food. I don't think we will live for another 10 days without food. You must find a way to live. Else the sacrifices of those rescue team members would not have any meaning. Guys, listen to me. We need to define a solution to this situation. We might as well be stuck here for another 10 days or even more. Does anyone has any plans to survive? Wait a minute. Is any one of you a physician? Go ahead. We have a physician here. Can we survive for another 10 days if we eat one among us stuck here? Wait a minute. What are you talking? Yes you will. Then tell me, is it legally acceptable or not, to kill another person and eat, considering our circumstances? Yes we can. So do you have an answer for my question or not? We might not. Okay then let me decide this. Guys, listen to me carefully, if we want to survive one of us must sacrifice. One of us must sacrifice and become food to the others so that at least four of us could survive and go out of this cave and see sunshine again. This is the only way out. I don't think there's any alternate solution to this problem. So the question is, do you agree on this or not? Since we have no other solution to this, let us all agree on this. Let's decide who should be that one. Through a game of dice. Everyone here will be given one number from 1 to 5 randomly. And the number of the dice decides who should sacrifice and who should see their families again. Let's wait for few days at least. When the situation of hunger becomes worst. Let's play this game then. I don't think that's a good idea. Let's play the game now. Even I think the same. Me too. Alright then. Let's throw the dice. So let's decide on the numbers. Let me take one. Roger you take two. Lorenzo you take three. Matthew you take four. William, you will be five. Is that acceptable to everyone? We don't have any choice. Let's get on with it. Can't wait any longer. 
throw the dice. Roger. I'm really sorry man. Let's cancel this. We will all wait and watch for a rescue team. Don't think that's a good idea. It was after all a fair game. What if it was my number? Or your number for instance? Then. It was a fair game. There was no cheating involved. Let's get on with it. It was a fair game. There was no cheating involved. And it was my idea of survival in these extraordinary circumstances with greatest possible number of men going out of this cave alive. It would only be fair for me to die, to help you all live. I'm ready for it. Freeze everyone, LAPD here. You are all under arrest on the charges of killing a man and performing cannibalism. All of you have the right to remain silent. You may speak before the judge when the trial begins. Now let's move out from here. So gentlemen, what do you have to say? Should they be convicted or acquitted? Well, there's something here that you all have to agree upon. These men were living in a state of nature and not in a civil society. So when the coexistence of men becomes difficult in the nature, then the necessity to coexist also disappears. So their act of eating a man to coexist does not fall under a crime. Even if we look at it on a territorial basis, these men lived underground. Our laws are not applicable underground. The second thing that I want to put forward is that an act of self-defense to protect their lives should not be considered a crime. So the verdict goes one all. Let's see how it ends. Mr. Foster, I think your points of argument sound very much intellectually unsound to me. The act of self-defense is absolutely absurd. If hunger cannot justify the theft of food, how can it justify the killing of a man? You need to answer this. But if we were to convict these four men for their crime, then what is the point of those ten rescue team members who sacrificed their lives to save these men? Would there be any justification to the loss of their lives? This is an unfortunate event. No question of doubt. I declare myself withdrawing from this jury. As I feel pity for these men who were struck in circumstances which forced them to kill a man. At the same time I could not digest the fact that they actually killed a man to satisfy their hunger. Mr. Trupani, this is going to be really tricky now. With Judge Tatting withdrawing himself from the jury. Let's wait and watch. Mr. Keen, I think it's your turn now. Which side of the judgment do you stand? Gentlemen, whether these four accused men did right or wrong, wicked or good is irrelevant here. We are here to perform our duties. While doing so our emotions should not take over our minds. 
The only question to decide is whether the act of these four accused men falls into the category of a crime according to our state law or not. Taking the life of Roger Watmore willfully by these men definitely falls under a criminal charge. And these men for doing so should be convicted and punished by death. So here we are. The jury is now 2 to 1 in favor of conviction of these four men to death. We finally have your turn Judge Handy. What do you have to say? Convicted or acquitted? We are all forgetting about the need in which they were present made them commit such an act. It's the necessity that has to be the accused, not the accused four men. Another aspect is why has the court given a chance to only five of us? Why isn't the court considering the 90% votes polled in a campaign which go by the decision of letting these four men go out free of charges and accusations? Why doesn't the court take 90% public opinion? It would be wrong on our part if we let these four men die. Going against public opinion is not correct especially a case which has drawn national and international attention. So. So I say, these men are innocent, they should be left free from all accusations. So the jury stand up to all. So what would be the final decision? Let the public decide.